welcome back to Queen Consolidated, a Southgate Media Group podcast dedicated to all things related to Arrow over on the CW. I am Lewis, and my commiserating <laughs> partner is... Hey, it's Phil. Um, up for discussion today is episode five of season five, Human Target. It was directed by Laura Beasley. Uh, she's a new director to Arrow. She did a great job, as well as the editor that edited this episode. So kudos to those two. And this episode was written by Oscar Balderrama and newcomer to the writer's room, Sarah Tarkoff. I uh, thought this was a great script as well. So kudos to you two as well. So has the synopsis for us. Oliver rescues Renee, who tells him that he gave up Green Arrow's true identity to church. Church plans to kill Oliver as the mayor instead of the vigilante. Diggle rejoins the team and recommends bodyguard Christopher Chance, the human target, to help them. Christopher impersonates Oliver at the city hall and fakes the mayor's death when Church's mercenary attacks. The team realizes that Church plans to consolidate the drug traffic of five cities through Star City, needing Green Arrow eliminated for his plan to succeed. Oliver and his team, joined by Diggle and Christopher, raid Church's meeting and capture him and other crime lords. Oliver publicly claims that his fake death was part of a sting operation. Prometheus kills Church during transport, despite Church telling him Green Arrow's identity. Television reporter Susan Williams obtains evidence that he was in Russia during the time he was supposedly stranded on the island. Meanwhile, Oliver finds out that Felicity is dating Billy Malone, a police detective recently assigned to the anti-crime unit. In flashbacks, Oliver is ambushed by other by other Bratva members. However, the man, however, the men are killed by Christopher, whom Anatoly had hired to protect Oliver. Dun dun dun! <laughs> and the plot freaking thickens. And this was a better uh, uh, end credit scene than Flash has done <laughs> in a long time. I'm just saying it's a, it's about as good as when we realize what Wells is up to when he <laughs> goes and kills the guy like. Seriously, it was that good. So <laughs> I was like, what? This episode was billed as an Elocity episode, but I think what they really meant to say was the closing the door on Elocity. This is the icing on that cake that has been the good parts of Arrow Season 5. Do you think they really closed the door on that, or do you think we're done with it for now? We're done with it for now. I think they're trying to recapture that great. Now, I'm not going to lie. Like, I was here for Oliver and uh, Felicity kind of flirting when she didn't mm-hmm. have a chance. Like, that will they or won't they makes great classic television. And I feel like what they suffer from was, I know this is like a tale as old as time. But the Moonlight Curse, like once they got those characters together, it was poop. But it, it was so many other things behind the scenes. And I think in Arrow's case, it's the weird shippers that ship Emily and Steven together, even though Steven is a happily married man with a child. Like, I really feel like they're trying to separate it for the actor's sake, not necessarily that that was something they actually wanted to do for the story. Because we all know they love Felicity and they love Elocity. They they don't make any bones about it on social media. So I feel like this Mm -hmm. was at the behest of the actors because of what a small faction of fans have start it do you know what i mean i mean i had no problem with relationship but i like what they did here but the rest of the episode i think this was my favorite episode of the season so far definitely there was lots of action um i feel like uh we kind of glossed over the human target but it's okay <laughs> he's had two shows it's okay <laughs> well, well, well that cave is too full with all the recruits now which by the way i knew Diggle would be good with it. Diggle did more with them, especially Wild Dog, in one episode. Not even a full episode of him with the recruits, but Diggle did more in one episode than Oliver did in the last four with those recruits. Well, and it's also sometimes it takes a a, a real military man to another military man to really get through because only they can truly understand what you've been through. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And Diggle's just awesome. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, and I think he's a he's a better teacher and more patient than Oliver. He's, he's the best big brother you'll ever want. Just ask Felicity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, I, no, no. I might not like Oliver and Felicity together, but I've always enjoyed Felicity and Diggle together. So, like, as friends, not weird shipping stuff. Yeah. 
Although that would have fixed a lot, to be honest. But anyway, um, I, I enjoyed uh, The Human Target because I, I have a little background in being a comic book nerd. And I also watched, technically it's three Human Target shows. I don't know if you guys hmm. know that. Technically it's three. Um, it didn't last very long. The first one didn't. It was back in the really, really early 90s. Um, but yeah, I liked who they cast for this guy. Uh, what was his name? Oh, Will Travel. And I know him from somewhere, but I can't put my finger on it. Do you know where this guy's from? Well, wasn't he in the uh, Jessica Jones series? <laughs> That's where it was from! Yes! It's like, um, we're just really trying to be Daredevil right now. Or in... And also, I just want to shade uh, Wendy Markle for a minute. Like, I, I just can't help myself. Okay, so I was re- I was watching the behind the scenes inside the episode, and you know the guy that's protecting uh, Church, she said he's scimitar and he's a big deal in DC, and I was like, there's only one scimitar in all of comics, and it's a Marvel character. No. <laughs> so yeah, that 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 too is our co-runner there, I just, our co-showrunner. I just <laughs> I found that hilarious. And I was like, well, Mark did write those Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. comic books. So, you know, it's all fair and dollars and donuts. But yeah, that annoyed me to no end. And technically, his uh, name is Shooter, which is, he's an OC, original character. But for me, it felt like he was Red X or somebody from, like, the Knight, uh, Arkham Knight series or something like that. That's what the costume looked like. Mm-hmm. So, that's just my two cents of where they got that inspiration from. But correct me if I'm wrong, if there is a scimitar in the DC universe, I doubt he's a big deal, but if there is one in the universe, <laughs> let me know. The only other scimitar I can think of is size scimitar, which is a weapon. So Yeah, but you're talking about that bodyguard of churches, right? Yep. But yeah, because I mean, if he's anybody, I mean, I didn't know, I mean, so... You didn't, he wasn't familiar to you. I know Tyler was even texting me. He's like, who's that guy? I'm like, I don't know. Yeah, that's what she said inside the episode. But then like, he's never really uh-huh. named in the episode. But I'm just like, that, that's uh-uh. Red X. In my head. That's my headcanon. They want to be like Batman and Teen Titans so bad. It's Red X. I'm good. Because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because usually, cause usually you get someone in a mask. It's usually someone, you know, someone from the comics. And they usually name drop them at least once. Yeah. But I like how he was like, I got a freak chasing me, so I got a freak to protect me. And I was just like, Church is just so... I'm sad he's gone. I liked him. Yeah, Chad Coleman, he was good here on The Walking Dead. It, he's, a, he's a good actor. He even did an episode of uh, Law & Order Special Victims Unit. He was really good in that, too. Now, see, I thought I saw every... Well, no, I haven't seen every episode since Stabler left, so that might have been post-Stabler. <laughs> yeah, it was... It, yeah, it was post stable. I think it was in the last two, two or three years, maybe. Okay. But yeah, so he bit the dust. Um, and so he didn't. He like he didn't even try to dame. The thing that annoyed me is that he just straight up told the guy, and it seemed like Prometheus already knew anyway. See, yeah, that was gonna be my question. I was gonna be like, did Prometheus not care, or was that confirmation that Prometheus knows who Oliver is? It was definitely confirmation. That I, that's how I took it. That's how I took it, too. Okay. I just, I just wish he would have been like, you know, I know, and killed him. <laughs> you wanted him to pull a hot solo? <laughs> I know. <laughs> um. So, Su- Susanna, uh, so Susan Williams is sticking around, and I'm just like, dude, the more you have Suzanne Williams around, the more people are going to be like, so is Green Lantern going to happen or not? Like, I just want, like... <laughs> We could have had the blonde chick that we had, uh, Beth, that was supposed to be Bethany Snow from Channel 52 instead of this girl. Like, I just really feel like this is an Easter egg. We don't need hanging around because we have so many Green Lantern hints and Flash and Arrow. And we all know they're never going to let Mark Guggenheim near uh, Green, uh, Green Lantern again. Or they better not. <laughs> but do, do you think she, she's going to be around for a long time or... You think they're going to go that cliche route where she's going to find out Oliver's identity and eventually she's going to get killed maybe by Prometheus or somebody? Or Thea. (laughs) (laughs) No, that would be a plot twist I'd be here for. (laughs) I don't know. 
But it's and like I said, the longer she sticks around, the longer that that whole Green Lantern distraction is going to be around. But I thought that she was great in this episode, I, especially like I said, I love the ending. And it's like, finally, he gets caught in his web of lies. But then again, I'm thinking there's pictures of him with the long hair and the long beard. So you're like, oh, so how did he grow the beard and the hair, Suzanne? How did he do it? Yeah. But do you oh. think that whole do you think that? You think that whole story with her and then uh, the whole thing with Chance and being in Russia, are are they doing that intentionally just so they're, they can be like, okay, look, people, the they, uh, flashbacks matter again. Don't don't use them as bathroom breaks this season. They matter. Well, they, they mattered from, from the first episode. We saw that there was a, a modern-day tie-in. So Yeah, I know, but like – People seem to like him the first two seasons, and then, like, I know last season, maybe even the season four, people were like, eh. Well, okay, here's the thing. Because they completely retconned it, and it has a lot to do with how The Flash came about and how they had to leave the show in the hands of Mark Guggenheim. And he wasn't okay with some of those ideas, and he, nobody, he was left to do what he wanted to his own devices. So he really was kind of sort of supposed to be on the island longer than two years. Um, obviously, we knew from the beginning that he wasn't, he didn't spend all this time because we learned in season one that he was in the Bratva. So obviously the Bratva wasn't on the island or were they? Dun, dun, dun. Um, or something like that. You know what I mean? But at the same time, mm-hmm. he, the first two seasons is I spent five years uh, trapped alone on a hellish island. And then all of a sudden in season three, it's I spent five years in hell. You know what I mean? Oliver is a big liar. He even lies to the audience. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I like that this is going to catch up with him. And I'm just like, who took the picture? Who took the picture at a brought the gal- ga- gathering? That's what you have to have a big set of brass balls for that one. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah and how did he? And how did they not get killed two seconds later? <laughs> it must have been a girl. It's always a girl. <laughs> Or, uh, but I like these that... flashbacks, but I'm just like, I still need Dolph. Like, that needs to happen next episode. <laughs> I think it does, doesn't it? That that link I sent you, I think, I, is it next episode, maybe? Is it next episode? Because I feel like now is the time that they're going to start uh, really revving up to the uh, crossover. Because I know there was, like, two episodes last year that didn't have flashbacks, and one of them was the crossover. So, I don't know. Either that Either that or we'll get like a, a, a crossover, a, a flashback heavy episode because the crossover probably. Will... If they want to bring back Anyhow. season one, uh, the Odyssey and the Promise are like two of the most highest rated uh, episodes on IMDb and also in like fans' opinions. So I'd be cool with that. Oh, here we go. That that article I sent you, Dolph Lundgren is just the kill in the first photos from the November 9th episode. That's next week. Yes. Yes, finally. Mm-hmm. Here for it. He looks really good yeah, in that so picture, I, by the way. I, I like these flashbacks. I'm loving Anatoly. Like, I just really wish Anatoly could come to the present and just be like a part, like just like us, like a shady side part of Team Arrow. Like, he doesn't have to know the whole team. He's just like Oliver's informant or something like that. He just meets him on a rooftop every week. <laughs> Not every week, or just like a shady CD bar. <laughs> He's got another little pretty bond on his arm, and he's just smug or something like that. Like, I need that. <laughs> he just throws out lines like, I liked you better before you wore sissy costume or something. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, how did you feel about Human Target? Do you know much about Human Target? or? Um, I read a little bit. I, I watched a few episodes of the of the series when it was on Fox. Um, I don't know. I don't know that much about his background, but I don't know. I thought... I thought it was weird. Well, I mean, that's his whole purpose, but I thought it was weird that he spent so much time as Oliver. Like, <laughs> the whole the whole thing about finding out about uh, Felicity and Billy Malone was him. And they didn't and... show it on screen, so I'm assuming that's a deleted scene that we can look forward to. Not <laughs> on the season five DVD no. slash Blu-ray release. So, yeah, I'm bringing a little flash humor. Sorry. <laughs> okay, Wells. <laughs> What's that saying? If you can't, it, always be yourself unless you can be Batman. But in this case, always be yourself unless you can be Wells. Then be Wells. <laughs> um, well, I was kind of bummed that they recast Human Target. I thought that, that would have been awesome if they could have got the guy from the Fox 
series. Because, honestly, we need to be friends with Fox if we ever want, like, any Batman-related thing ever on the CW proper. Just saying. It worked for Sony and Marvel. Just saying. (laughs) (coughs) Nightwing. (laughs) Yes. Yes. That's exactly what. Or Teen Titans, because Teen Titans has a lot of Batman-related stuff. (laughs) Um, So, yeah. Yeah. Um. What else can we talk about? I love how the recruits were in awe of Diggle in his Spartan mode. That was pretty. Funny. Oh yeah, and his better helmet. Although that's just, I, I just because I, I'm sorry, I have to point this out. That's just Ray's helmet reworked. We all, we know this, right? Like that's literally what it was. They just spray painted it. And, okay. Moving on. Well, hey, it may, it's still it may, better than the the, the, makes, the strap on Halloween mask. I agree. It, it makes sense. It makes sense. I mean, if they if they couldn't get a hold of Cisco, then they just uh, took some of Ray's hand me downs or something. So yeah, yeah. I mean, now he looks more Cyclops than Magneto. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. It's it's a, it's an improvement, <laughs> but there better be a third one because you can still see his face. Then what's mm. the point? Just saying, uh, Diggle. Like I. I like Diggle in the when Oliver, him and Oliver in the first like two seasons when it was more grounded and it was street level work and he was, you know, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. I don't really like him like in yeah. the superhero gear. Like I'm just sorry, unpopular opinion. Sorry. <laughs> um, let's see. So this was kind of a weird episode because I mean everything came of Oliver this episode, unless you count him breaking up with uh like, quote unquote closing the door on uh. His and Felicity's relationship, which I think is a major win for him, too. Just saying. Mm-hmm. From the writing standpoint of view of what we've seen of them together, they are not good together. Period. She wants him to be something yeah, else that I he mean, can never be. And that's just not fair to either of them. Yeah, but I think I saw a twinkle in her eye when he was like, I still care about you. You're always going to be my girl, Felicity. That, that's what it was. Uh, I hearkened it to. Because uh, the they did bring up the clock, uh, the clock uh, kings. Uh, when she got shot, so I thought that, that was kind of a shout out to that too. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was just waiting for the line. If he if he treats you bad, I'll kill him or something. I think that goes without saying. <laughs> but it was really funny. Yeah. I, I think one of the funniest lines was Billy was like, uh, "Does Mayor Queen know?" She's like, "It doesn't help when you call him Mayor Queen." <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, but yeah, it was just kind of weird. It's like, okay, so we've told Rory, aka Ragman, that you destroyed Haven Rock, but you can't deal with telling Oliver that you're seeing somebody. Okay, what ofs? <laughs> oh, what do they do with that character? <laughs> I know, I know that I, I didn't like him sneaking onto her balcony. Like that was weird. Uh, so why are we downplaying Curtis? I don't know for believability because he wouldn't be trained that quickly or or are they just where he's gonna outshine a lot of them if he's too, if Curtis is too capable would, would they be like well why do we need the why do we need the rest of these recruits I think maybe we're supposed he's supposed to take this knifing and this is where he figures he's not gonna be as phys- he doesn't have the physical prowess or the finesse and this is where the T-spheres and all that stuff come in. Hmm. Maybe. That's the only reason why I could think that they're nerfing him. Because he is a Olympic caliber athlete. I think it takes a lot of confidence, too. Which I don't think he has. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. At least not yet. Yeah. So, you think he's going to make it out of this season alive? I hope so. I mean, if they uh, if they kill anyone, I hope it's Wild Dog. I see... I think Wild Dog was the person that basically, sorry, sorry to bring this up. He's he's the Laurel. He's the character that everybody's supposed to love and hate. And he's supposed to grow in his skill set. But I can't see any of these recruits except for maybe Evelyn sticking around at the end of the season. Yeah. I mean, I can see Curtis sticking around maybe, but yeah, not and being out support. on the street. Yeah. Maybe get us some more uh, trick arrows. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I don't know. I'm just, I'm really confused about the recruits. Like, I don't really care about them. I just want to know who's going to die, who's going to stay. <laughs> mm. We didn't get a lot of City Hall, aka the mayor arc this week, but what we did get was pretty cool. I like how Oliver and Thea teamed up and really put that crony capitalist in his place. <laughs> you mean, you mean Christopher Chance? <laughs> <laughs> Exactly, uh, but it was it's it was inside you all along, don't you know? 
Hmm. Oh, I like how he also scored that reporter chick's number for him. And I'm just like, you better not bang that, Ollie. That's not a good idea. Never bang a reporter. Unless her name's Willis Lane. Then then that's when we bang. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's been with anyone since Felicity, man. It's all it's Oliver. That's like years. <laughs> I know. It yeah. I think I think we are gonna get back to some Playboy ways. Mm-hmm. So and that, I think that that was fun. Like honestly, I liked McKenna. I, I liked when he was had the Playboy persona because it made sense. But I don't know as a mayor if that's gonna work. Although he is young, hot, and single, he's pretty much <laughs> probably the number one most eligible bachelor in the city at this point. So, but I don't, I don't, I don't. I think the relationships that we need to focus on are the team dynamics and nothing else. That's just my personal opinion. Yeah, romance can wait till season seven. So, plus, you have Felicity and her and her new boyfriend. There's your romance. I, I really feel like there's gonna be some love geometry between her, Rory, and Billy. Like I just I feel it in my bones. I don't know. I think B- Billy's either Prometheus or working with Prometheus. Right? Okay. So right, because I feel like this too, because the AC, uh, the um, anti crime unit guy in the first episode dies, and all of a sudden he gets that guy slot. Uh-huh. Hmm. Right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Prometheus killed that guy. Yeah. yeah. Plus, Theo's not seeing anybody right now, so they can't be the secret bad guy. So it's Felicity's turn. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. But that's arrow organic logic right there. It really is. So what do we think about Ali's initiation or final interview to be in the Bratva? Went a lot better than uh, the previous weeks. <laughs> So why do you think they're against Oliver? I mean, is it just because he's American? I'm thinking, and plus, you're, you know, they they still know, they probably still know him as like the pampered playboy. They're like, okay, you're here. Why? You don't deserve to be here. And what's Anatoly's end game for having Oliver in the brothel? Like, it just feels weird. Is it just friendship, or does he feel like he owes Oliver? Maybe. I feel like there's something more sinister. Maybe. Like, I like Anatoly, but, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, as a comic book fan, it's just like, okay, what's what's the end game here? I think it's just a uh, plot device to get him into the Bratva. You know what? I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll stop thinking so deeply about it, and I'll take it. <laughs> so, do you think Wild Dog should still be on the team, or do you um, think he should take, do you think he should resign? No, I think he should be on the team, but of course, I mean, this, of course, I knew the minute Oliver unmasked for them, that was going to come back and bite him. And I'm glad that it did, because mm-hmm. it means the season always right. But then uh, again, he would have died quicker because he would have had nothing to tell him, so I don't know. Yeah, but it, the, the whole, that don't, I never get that whole thing about digging your own grave. It's like, you know what, if you're going to kill me, kill me. Why are you going to make me do extra work before I die? It, it's it's a psychological. It's supposed to be a psychological thing, I guess. But I'll yeah. be like, you know what? Just shoot me now. I don't I don't do manual labor. Just shoot me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so why did Tommy? I mean, Prometheus kill Church? <laughs> well, I think he knew that he knew his identity. So I oh. think Prometheus has, has been spying on everybody. He's got all his angles covered, and when it comes to taking down the Green Arrow. AKA the hood. It, it's his job and his job alone, and he doesn't want anybody messing up what he has planned. Well, yeah, because, um, yeah, he Prometheus has shown, you know, whether he wants revenge for himself, he's been protective of the Green Arrow. That, yeah, that's pretty much why he killed Church. I, that was a really amazingly cut scene, too. The mm-hmm. music, the how they captured it, I thought it was really excellent. I was trying to look at Prometheus's outfit too, and trying to see the body type. I'm sure it's a stunt double, but the body type. I'm like, are we sure Prometheus is a guy? Are you on the Shadow as Prometheus or Shadow Sisters as Prometheus bandwagon? The, no, I'm not on the bandwagon, but the thought did uh, like pass through my head at one point. So. Okay, yeah, like, I know I shouldn't take stock in these clues, especially after the gray fiasco of last season, but they did say that the person that uh, is under the mask that is Prometheus is somebody that the hood in season one wronged. 
Hmm. The hood specifically, not Oliver, but the hood. Um, hmm. a really good theory that I heard was the guy from the um from episode five legacies, um, from the you know you know, the card gang, the Oh, the Royal Flush Gang? Thank you, the Royal Flush Gang. That hmm. guy. The son. I don't... Because his dad he... took the bullet for him. Yeah, but do you think it's going to be that small, though, as the, where, where you have to say, you know, that guy from well, that one episode? Well, was that small. Think about it. She He saved her and she got obsessed. It, it is a running theme in this show. Yeah. But they didn't hide her identity for how many episodes. Do you think... Well, they thinking. need a plot. They do need a mi- every almost every season. There's a mystery plot. If you like, yeah. season one was what is the undertaking? Oh yeah. Uh, and pl- season and plus, two, they never even revealed Malcolm Merlin's identity. You know that he was the Dark Archer for till what mid season. Exactly. So, you know what I mean. So there's there's literally been a mystery every single season, and I think that that's just their way of how they drive their plot. So I don't think that that should really factor into anything. You know what I mean? Yeah, but but just the mask and everything, it, it just screams bigger mystery to me. Because like if if it's the guy from that episode, he's gonna pull off his mask, and half the audience is gonna be like, "Who?" But well, I'm I'm thinking, well, yeah, but I'm just thinking it's somebody with a bigger impact. It's either Tommy or Shadow or something like that. Or maybe it's Robert Queen. <laughs> That's right. Supposedly he's in the hundredth episode, along with everyone else. I don't know. It'd be awesome, but like I said, I I have set the bar at medium level for Arrow, mm-hmm. so you know, not as not to be too disappointed. Thing, I will eat the crow. I will throw some hot sauce on it and have fun with yep. it. <laughs> I really hope it is something that they thought out mm-hmm. a little bit better than the grave plot line. Like I'm still salty about it, so that that probably has uh, colored my view of things. Yeah, but this week was good. Like I said, this is my favorite of the season so far. Definitely. I, I thought this was a very well put together episode. Fast paced. Uh, we introduced a great character that has a chance to come back. Uh, the heat is on uh, for Oliver as mayor because with this whole Suzanne Williams thing. Uh, is is the public going to learn that he possibly lied about this great tragedy? You know? Mm-hmm. How is that going to reflect? He already has low approval rating or so we hear every single week. I don't know. Once Prometheus finds out she's digging around. (laughs) Oh, okay. If he has sex with her, then Prometheus is definitely killing her. I'll put it to you that way. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I, 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 yeah, he's going to sleep with her. She's going to lay off the story, but Prometheus is going to kill her anyway. Yep. I mean, because think, the last person that, besides uh, Felicity and Laurel, uh, McKenna Hall's parent was paralyzed. They had to go to Coast City. So that's kind of a running theme in this series as well. Women close to Oliver get hurt. So. Maybe. Maybe you're on to something. <sighs> I can't wait to see. I, I do like, oh, one of my favorite moments, by the way, is when Diggle talks about the team. He's like, we got a psycho a Laurel wannabe, and, and Curtis? What the hell is Curtis doing here? No! <laughs> I was like, thank you, Diggle. I've missed you. I've missed you so much. Did our, did our, did our Windows 10 need an update? <laughs> uh, Felicity did, did get a good line when she said, I would punch these monitors if I didn't know how much they cost. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Lenovo is very expensive. It really is. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have any favorite things to talk about? Um, just that that I know we've talked it over and over, but that end scene, like you were saying, when Prometheus kills Church, it was it was so well done and just got you thinking. It's like okay, he knows Oliver's identity probably. <laughs> Who is he? Or she? Oh, yeah. I, I, I kind of feel like if they really wanted us to put the mystery together, there would be more crumbs, and there's just, like, no crumbs. It almost feels like, well, the only rhyme and reason is to it is that they want to stop whoever is impeding their way 
in their plan for their revenge. And that that's pretty much the only rhyme and reason to it. Mm-hmm. I mean, Oliver and the Hood slash Arrow slash Green Arrow have pissed off a lot of people. No. And I yeah. I almost, my real straight up put on your tinfoil crackpot theory is that it's Taya al Ghul. Oh. But then I'm like, the Hood didn't do anything to them until, well, at that point he was the Arrow. So, uh-huh. but, you know, we're supposed to be getting her, played by uh, Lexia Dowig, so. Yeah. It's just like, maybe, maybe I shouldn't take that season one thing. Uh, maybe I should take it with a big grain of salt, because I think that that would be amazing. Because it's an archer, oh. and, well, League of Assassins, well, in this universe, we're big on archery, so. Tinfoil hat time, what if Prometheus is Thea? Ooh, the <laughs> bloodlust personified. <laughs> that would be actually really awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Barry, what did you do to the timeline? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I just keep saying. I was like, I really feel like there's more to it. We're just not seeing the bigger picture, but. Uh... I don't know. I'm just I'm just thinking it's Tommy under there and it's like the whole Superboy Prime thing, you remember originally or uh yeah, Superboy Prime brought Jason Todd back and then later the Lazarus Pit. I'm thinking Barry Allen Barry Allen and Flashpoint brought Tommy back and now it was a Malcolm put him in a Lazarus Pit and brought him back. You know what? I wouldn't even be mad about it. Like I love Colin. Y'all know this. Y'all should know this. But like I said, it's just really if they if they actually manage to pull this off, well, it's gonna be epic. <laughs> uh huh. Because it wasn't Malcolm against using the Lazarus pits for Sarah or somebody, and I'm thinking, what if he was against it because he he put Tommy in the pit and he saw how it like I don't know either turned him against him or he came out half crazed for a while. Yeah, we'll see. Ah, uh, let's let's grade this sucker. Uh, this one's an A for me. Like I said, it's my favorite of the season so far. Yeah, I'm gonna agree with it. Straight up A. Uh, aces all around. I thought the acting improved. I really loved what David Ramsey brought out in Rick Gonzalez, who plays Wild Dog. I thought that that scene was really great and just really what we've been missing. Like, Steven is a proficient actor, but when he's around the likes of, say, uh, Susanna Thompson, who played Moira... Uh, it she just brought something out in him. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I just I just feel like the veteran actors, the more seasoned actors, really have a way of bringing something out in the less seasoned actors. And I just want to see more of Diggle with the team. Agreed. <sighs> great action, great mm-hmm. editing, just all around. Uh, I hope Laura Beasley becomes a staple because she did a really great job, and it's always awesome we have really proficient lady directors and lady writers on staff so <laughs> i'm happy totally uh were there any any other easter eggs besides human target that you noticed uh not can i can think of um, i'm looking and not really oh so how do you think Anatoly know? Well, Anatoly uh, had Human Target save Oliver in the flashbacks too. Do you think that was just be just because, or is there something more to this? Uh, I'm thinking maybe just because he was in the episode, but I know he was kind of out of it. But Oliver didn't recognize him from that time. Yeah. I don't know it's just weird like okay maybe this they just want to use the actor one more time <laughs> maybe get their money's worth <laughs> um, anyway uh time for some shameless plugs and self-promotion i want to remind you guys to go over to southgatemediagroup.com to check out our list of well over 100 podcasts uh there's information about the hosts we have pretty cool blogs and there's a way to support this podcast to keep a uh, podcast network afloat uh by donating so please go there. We're on all your favorite podcatcher services, such as Lisbon.com, iTunes, Stitcher, and of course, if you're an Android user, in the Google Music uh, app under podcasts, <clears throat> Queen Consolidated. You can find us on Twitter at QC underscore SMG pod. 
Our email is queenconsolidated.smg at gmail.com. And you can find us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash queenconsolidated. Philip, where can they find you? Uh, well, before I get to mine, I just want to tell everyone, I think we got, oh, got yeah, get what, two more episodes before the crossover. Uh, those so the next two weeks will be business as usual. But the week of the crossover, instead of four shows, you're only going to get one. But it's going to be, since the shows are crossing over, we're all going to cross over. We're going to have a round table with all six of us discussing uh, that week's mega crossover. So, Oh, dear. Be prepared, <laughs> be prepared for that. Yeah. Get, dust off the timer, Phil. <laughs> just like just like Supergirl is going to get to team up with the Legends of Tomorrow, we will get to team up with Charlie Esser. <laughs> nice. Uh, but, yeah, uh, and you could just follow uh, the – the channel as a whole at um at Legends of DC Pod on Twitter. Um, we have a Facebook page too, Legends of DC uh, Podcast, and discuss any DC Marvel, any of that fun stuff with me. Uh, Nightwing PDP at gmail.com and on Twitter I am at Nightwing PDP. And like I said, I also discuss Marvel, so check me out all over the uh, Enough Said podcast also. And just want to thank the listeners for apparently you like us. You really do. We had a really great numbers for this past month. So we appreciate it. Uh, remember right. to download the episodes. <laughs> Streaming doesn't count. And um, it, it, it has been a wild ride for season five so far. I'm really happy. I hope you guys have noticed the improvement. I'm very positive <laughs> for the most part, unless it's mm-hmm. about Felicity. <laughs> <laughs> So I hope you guys are enjoying that. I'm really enjoying uh, podcasting with Phil. I feel like it's a really fresh new dynamic. And I think you guys are enjoying it too. All we need are some listener emails or tweet us or leave a message on the Facebook. We really want to hear what you guys think about the podcast and about uh, season five of Arrow. So until next time, this is Queen Consolidated. Signing off.